Okay. Bye. That's okay. not pokey pokey. No, something is fishy in Denmark, sir. Ah, uh, you said it. Now, what about the? Uh, uh, what do you uh, want to do with it? I want to. Uh, I want to seek your advice. I mean, what should I do, Hank? I would say you go another city. Uh, try to make out of thick wood of life. Uh, pagoda. Uh, not and, den. And not a den. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's my advice to you. Well, look here. I mean, uh, what am I going to do? In the meanwhile, I'm broke. I uh, I have some bills. I got to pay uh, off quicker. I'll go right into pokey. Uh, ask you a uh, question or two. You I ain't struck up with no woman, nothing like that. No. You have any children, do you? Uh, no. Have any little bambino? Well, three, yeah. You have three bambino? Patty, Maxine, and Laverne. I want to suggest... But they're doing okay in the state. Well, uh, don't worry about them now. I would suggest you will find another line of work. Okay, whatever you... Another river, you mean? Well, yeah. uh, that'll be all right. Yeah. Okay, I'll find another river and I'll... Uh, let's maybe go in the laundry business. They say there's good money in that now. Well, I don't know... Otherwise, see me at my pagoda after program. Okay, she... Thanks uh, a lot. If a dragon lady answers, you're on the wrong program. Oh, stop this nonsense, dragon lady. I yeah, love those Far East things, though. They're great for kids. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you ever notice uh, those kid programs late in the afternoon? They always... Uh... There's a new Humphrey Bogart picture, which I was reading a review of in, in Time last week, where he plays a devil-may-care American who owns a hotel or something in far-off Shanghai. Oh, lucky Humphrey. That, <laughs> that happens so often, I suppose. I never, uh, I, I never get involved in anything like that, Bob. I don't own any hotels. In but it has appeal, though, and um, it must. Uh, kids love those Far well, Eastern type it, things. It has a mysterious setting to begin with. You see, there are, there are uh, murky street corners. Yeah. Peculiar characters. Poor street lighting. Lurking in and under the bad street lights. And then rainy seasons. That's always good for two or three weeks. When the rains come, yeah. yeah the rainy the, season. The rice paddies just fill up. It's one, of, it's one of them things, and Bob and I are working on a new kiddies program, and just as soon as we get the format worked out, we're going to try and sell it to some network, aren't we, Bob? Some network. I don't know just which one. We, we haven't see. decided which lucky one we'll approach first. Oh, but they are waiting for us with bated breath. And he Thanks, Bob. And hello again, today. everybody. Hi. I'm bated breath. How are you, bated? Glad to, glad to be with you. Right. And what have you been doing with yourself lately? Well, I've been trying to push your work, boys, your soap operas. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been no nibbles as yet. I see. Well, but, uh, uh, I think the day will come when it'll go big. Which one do they seem to like best? Jack Headstrong, the All-American American. American. Uh -huh. He seems to be uh, pretty good. The, the kids like him. I see. He's solid with the kids, huh? Yeah, and uh, the mothers like Linda. The mothers go for Linda. Yeah, that's a little pole I've been taking around Boston here. Mm -hmm. You go door to door, do you? Door to door pole, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I, I ask him questions. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what program do you listen to at 1 o'clock? Have, <laughs> have you asked any Have you asked any barbers in this pole of yours? Uh, what's that again? I say, have you gone into any barber shops and polled them? That's all right. Don't need to go in anything. You know what I'm leading up to, don't you? Sure, Barber's Pole. Yeah. I thought that was coming, and I wanted to stop it before it happened. Friends, I'll accept all thanks in the mail. Simply there's a postcard with the word thanks on it to me. To Barber Pole, WHDH Boston. And this is a new <clears throat> thing. It's in competition with Hooper and Crosley. The Barber Pole. Let me see what we have here. Baby, it's cold outside. <coughs> and it's time to put antifreeze in the cart. Did you go out to lunch yet? No, I oh, haven't. It's nice and warm, wasn't it? Baby, it's cold outside. And it's time to put antifreeze in the car or truck or tractor. This kind of weather is very insidious. Incidentally, on the weather forecast, I hear it's going to be a little colder tonight. Mm -hmm. So you never know now that we're in November. Now, just we're going to have, have a, a real freeze up one of these days, and it pays to be prepared. It pays to be a step ahead of the crowd, friends, and to have neutro in your radiator when old Jack Frost starts waving his magic wand. Starts nipping at your radiator. <laughs> the uh, the new neutro <laughs> is a, a scientifically improved permanent antifreeze that you put in your radiator once and they forget about freeze-up. Neutro gives you better... You long. don't really forget about them. You know when there's a freeze-up. Uh, you I do. Mean, that's really misleading. When you see other cars steaming up and boiling right. over. But you'll be... Excuse me, somebody's horn. <laughs> Somebody wants to pass. Will you pull over to the right? <laughs> right okay. Neutro gives you better, longer-lasting protection, and it saves money, too, because it doesn't evaporate or boil away. Neutro, N-U-T-R-O, 
Neutral, as its name implies, is neutral. Absolutely harmless to the car finish and mechanical parts. Also, it's anti-rust. Neutral is a good product, folks. <laughs> it's been tested and approved everywhere, and you get an unconditional guarantee of freeze protection with absolute safety. Not only that, but you can leave it in all year, and your car will run cooler next summer. You'll be smart if you put in Neutro now and forget about freeze-up for good. It's Neutro permanent anti-freeze. A good product, folks. N now it's your favorite service station or garage. If they don't have it, if they don't have Neutro, it's your favorite uh, service station or garage. Call Arnco Auto Supply, Highlands 2, 6420, Highlands 2, 6420, or the Lincoln Oil Company, Boston. Get neutral for your radiator this very day. You'll have to look up Lincoln's phone number in the book. Lincoln Oil Company in Boston, that's right. It yeah. is good, and put it in your radiator, and you'll be feeling good again. Just speaking of Lincoln's Gettysburg address, this is in Boston. Green is... What is Lincoln's Gettysburg address? 34 White Street? <laughs> no, we've never thought of that. And we'll, we'll leave... Uh, had, a, had a commercial the other day. What is Washington going to do about this? <laughs> Honestly? Yeah. Well, we'll wait. If I knew they didn't mean George. No, it couldn't be. What are you talking about, Bill? If you can't tell the whole class, then don't keep it to yourself. You're talking about your sparkling arrangement of a song called Louise? I don't care how it goes. You want to play it, I Sammy think. Eisen version? Is this in Sammy's library? Huh? Uh, here's Wilson and Billy Green. Here's book 74 from the Sammy Eisen library. Bob, why don't we sing that like Sammy Eisen would sing it on his Coast to Coast show? Uh, what show is that? His Coast to Coast program. Uh, all right. Say, every little breeze seemed to whisper Louis. Birds in the tree seemed to twitter Louis. Each little rose tells me it knows. I love you. Hold up, steady. Love you. What's going on in here? And every little bee oh, that sorry. I feel in my heart. I didn't know you were on the air. Seems to repeat what I felt at the start. Each little sigh tells me that I adore you. Why don't you get down off the horse, Sam? Louis. Can't reach the microphone if I don't. Brings joy I never knew. But to be so, so near you, thrills me through and through. Everybody sings. It had to be by the wonder is it. And it be true. Someone like you could love oh, them birds. A Louis. Louis. Now we do room 202. Well, I guess we won't do any more. <laughs> Thank that you very much. That has been restricted, I understand, by our music 
staff. Ken, uh, tell me more about Vladimir. Does he still play the clarinet? Is it true that he's going to form his own band and go on the road, or what? Doing a lot of one-nighters, I understand. Uh, I guess Mr. Wilson doesn't want to say. No, I can't much blame him. But, but all the music critics in town went crazy over Vladimir's performance. And uh, they did. They did, really. They waxed very poetical. Yeah. Uh, some went as far as to use the term terrific. Well, that's... Others uh, used the term they were less sturdily than their seats. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, they all certainly went for his performance. Well, enough of that. It's time to get over to River's Mouth, I believe. We only have a few minutes to get there, too, so we'll have to use my high-powered motorcycle bar. The Life and Loves of Linda Lovely, written for radio by A. Carrington Love. Yesterday, Marge and Charlie arrived from Tacoma, Washington. They were received warmly at Linda's small house. Halfway up in the next block, the house happened to have been on fire at the time. It's a few hours later now, after they have enjoyed a delightful dinner. They sit under the old grandfather's clock as it strikes four. The sun is sinking over the hills of River's Mouth. Come on, Come on. Linda turns... I have to fix the clock, Bob. All right. You've oh, oh, done that this morning when you were sweeping up. That's when you're supposed to fix that clock. I'm careless. Linda turns to David with a tear in his eye, and she says... <laughs> David, there's a tear in your eye. So but I run to you something. I... I'm wondering why. Oh, no, 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 we're losing the whole, no, 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 we're losing the whole effect here. After all, it's a serious soap opera. We can't sell anything uh, if you do it that way. We haven't got anything to sell to begin with. Well, you never know, Bob, well, about those things. Linda this turns to... mushroom. Let's be businesslike about this. Linda turns to David and says, I don't like you, David, anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, Bob, don't just walk out like that. Answer it back. What would you say if somebody said they don't like you anymore? You'd walk out, wouldn't you? I'd say, well, I don't like you either, hey. Or something equally sturdily. So let's try it and oh. see what happens. I don't like you anymore, David. Please leave. Well, I don't like you anymore either. I'm leaving. You want to fight? <laughs> You're bigger than I am. Sissy. Well. Gee, I mean, it could develop, you see. You know, something that could work good. into something. I mean, uh, there might be a fight there. We'll hope so, anyway, for tomorrow. Incidentally, David will be wearing lavender shirts and uh, white sneakers. He'll be weighing 93 pounds. <laughs> well, we know you all enjoyed today's program just half as much as we have. Is that right? <laughs> just one quarter as much, probably. And all we can do is promise that we'll be back again soon with more antifreeze. Neutro is the name of that antifreeze if you didn't get time to write it down. N-U-T-R-O. Right, then we're going to go out to the Anko Auto Supply this afternoon. Right, we'll be making a personal appearance out there about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, really? I'm going to go out there and uh, try a little of that neutro. Okay, so that should prepare them. We want to thank Wilson for coming today. And Billy Green for appearing at the piano. That day with Bob and Ray is the program at 1 o'clock. Sunday is a copyrighted radio feature. Cannot be handled. Or mail. Yes, it's WHCH in Boston, incidentally. It's a friendly station. It certainly is. Nifty. We laugh all day long up here. Just walk right over to this microphone. That may uh, it was Bob and Ray. Friends and welcome to another in our long series of public service programs presented by totally in particular just a few casual sponsors who are nice people and who have nice products to sell. And that's what we're here for, to sell these nice products to you nice people. And a reasonable, and a reasonable figure, of course. Certainly. Wilson, the great Wilson is at the organ. And uh, Bill Green. Stop them, say. Boy, they're going forever, I guess. Stop the music! Wow! I never boy. thought you'd get there, man. That's that crisp, cool November air that's gotten into our musicians. But you had me right up on the edge of the chair while I was listening to that. I'm very disappointed, Bill. I thought you weren't going to be here today. Well, how's that? He was going to play for some luncheon. Did it fall through? And oh. they didn't have it? They wanted a good piano player, huh? So you're here. No, so we can't say that about Bill Green to be truthful. No, because he is one of the top uh, piano players in the city of Boston. 
Hey, hey.